Hi everybody, I'm Lynn, and today we're going to be learning how to paint and draw birds. Before we begin, I hope you're all sitting in a nice space that you're able to put all your materials out comfortably. Um, don't do what you're seeing me do, and that's not cover the table. I was really silly today and forgot to bring any paper to cover the table. So I recommend you get something and cover your workspace. You've got your paint pods. I want you to take all your paint pods. Don't open them yet until you're ready to actually paint. I've brought a few bigger ones just to make it easier for me to use today. And you've got your brushes, which you got in the mail. So before we begin, I want you to take your brushes and I want you to dip them in water and I want you to let them soak while we're learning to draw. And the reason behind that is that some of the bristles can come out. So we're going to let them soak a little bit and pull them gently so that you don't have loose bristles in your painting. I'm going to begin today by showing you very simply how to draw a bird using simple shapes and then we're going to go over a few things like composition and what bird you want to do. So a bird's made up basically out of an oval shape and another little shape on the top. It's then got a wing which comes down like that and a rectangle for a tail and then you want to have a little beak and a little eye and you've got a place at the bottom where you can almost push this out to have your little feet. So those are the three very simple shapes we're going to be focusing on. Your oval, an extended oval, and some a half oval for the head, and a little triangle. I'm going to turn this to the back and turn it over so I can show you one other thing that you could do, you could draw very, very lightly, a half circle, a big oval, something for your wing and your rectangle. And then I want you to take your pencil and lightly draw the outside of the shape. Now I want you to do this on the paper that you're going to find in your package. Don't start on your canvas. Take a moment. We're going to think about what bird you're going to do. You're going to remember that the bird you're painting does not need to be my bird. It does not need to be my composition. This is your project and your choice. So what we're going to do right now is just take the paper in the package, find a pencil, and let's loosely sketch out these shapes. And you'll notice I'm not drawing with my hand, I'm drawing with my arm. So I'm sketching out loose shapes, positioning up exactly the shapes of the bird. And of course, this is a bird that's going to be sitting on a branch. While you're in your beginning planning stages, I want you to take a minute and decide or think about what your composition is going to be. Do you want to have two birds in your painting? This is a very pretty example of two birds, perhaps a partner, a spouse, a friend, a significant other that you want to be represented in your painting, or do you want to have something on your own? Um, this one, I hope you can see the ink cartridge didn't come out nicely, but it's a beautiful painting of a hummingbird. So I want you to think about what kind of birds you want and also where you're going to position the birds. Do you want to have one in the middle? Are you going to have two? Are you maybe going to have, you know, your tree trunk coming through? Are you going to have one in flight? So take a second before you pull out your canvas, let's use the paper that you've got and get, take a few minutes to think about this. While you're doing that, I wanted to show you something really cool. Um, a lot of us are really scared and intimidated by drawing. And I think there's some tools out there that you might want to order on Amazon and try. And I brought with me today some tracing or transfer paper. And I'm going to let our camera zoom in on this and let the um, Hoke 
department send this out to you because it's a really cool tool to have. And what you do do is you take your canvas or a piece of paper, you put your transfer paper down, you then take an image, which I actually took the liberty of just printing off the internet for you today, and you place that on top, and all you have to do is trace over this, and I'm gonna just do this quickly, removing this at the bottom, so I have a little pressure. But you just trace over the lines, and that will transfer your image onto your canvas. So if you're choosing to do a bird that's really technical and you're really not sure how to draw it, remember you can put this aside, order your transfer paper, and that's a really, really cool trick to transfer an image. Um, this is kind of fun if you want to practice doing other images like people or faces or portraits and it's just a really cool trick to have. So for today, that's I'm going to put our transfer paper aside and I'm going to talk about composition. So before we begin, um, I had another canvas that I had prepared for you that shows two birds. And if you look carefully, there is the shape in the middle. There is that oval shape over here. There is a space over here for a wing. There is space at the bottom for the feet and the triangle and the little eye. And then I decided to put a little friend up, maybe carrying something, a gift, a flower, doesn't matter. But I positioned this bird, a circle, an oval, extend out the arms using two ovals. You have the shapes. So if you're ready to start thinking about your composition now and the kind of birds you, you want to do, it's a good time to pick up your canvas. Um, when we paint, we have our three brushes. We have a big brush which you've got in your package and I want you to just gently pull those bristles so there's no loose hairs. That, that brush is going to be used for the background, I'm sorry. So that brush is a very good brush for the background. You've got a middle size brush which is a good brush when we come into doing the little smaller areas and you've got a pointy brush which is the brush we're going to use for the details. So that's your three brushes. Um, I'm going to just wipe this off and I think for today we're going to do our hummingbird. I'm going to do the hummingbird but when you do yours I want you to please remember you do not need to do what I'm doing, you do not need to copy what I'm doing, you do not need to have a blue background and you do not need to have a green and brown bird. This is your choice, your creation and you're in, char you're in charge of your own masterpiece. So I'm going to use my charcoal just because I think it's a little easier to see and I'm again going to take an oval and an oval. I suggest you don't use charcoal because it can be a little messy to use, rather use a pencil. The beauty about charcoal though is it is easy to erase. So if you do have a mistake or you've made a mistake you can change it easily and I have my tail extending down. So there's my little hummingbird. I'm going to bring my wings out. And I'm going to very gently erase that so I can see it, but I don't have all these black marks behind my painting. I'm now going to start painting my background, and I've opened up my blue and dipped into my white. And I'm actually going to take a tiny bit of the teal and I want to make a very cool light color for my sky. And I'm going to show you how to ombre something, how to shade. So you take your paint, and this is a really good time now to open your paint pots. Be careful when you open them. Open the ones just that are relevant to the areas that you want to paint. So if you're going to be using blue, I would suggest you open the blue and leave the other colors at the back or just near you waiting for you to open. 
So you're going to add your white until you have a color that you like. If you want to make this teal a little darker, you can actually dip into a little bit of brown. I'm going to put a teeny bit of brown on there. And the brown will make that color not as bright. So you get a much lighter, softer color, which I actually prefer. And I'm mixing my background color. I like that color. I'm going to start off at the back. And I want you to start going from side to side using the color of your choice, not necessarily mine. And the fun thing is you can double dip so you can add colors as you go. And the other thing is you can move your brush in different directions which will give you the appearance of some texture. And we're going to start off by just painting the background. While the background's drying, we'll go through a few little technical tricks. I would also at home paint my edges. I'm going to show my camera crew exactly what I mean because it finishes the painting off really, really beautifully. And there's our little hog easel. And we go backwards and forwards. I'm going to add a little bit more white. I'm going around the bird. I'm actually not going to use a horizontal brush stroke. I'm going to go up and down. I like seeing my brush stroke. I'm going to go in all the way around my bird. This term is called scumbling, where you take your paint and you take your brush and you actually scumble it onto your canvas. Now, if you wanted to add a little yellow to maybe brighten it up at the bottom, you can. Going backwards and forwards, making sure that all these little holes are covered. I'm going to brighten it up even more as I go down. I'm going to just lift this up so you can see it. Coloring in the side. Maybe going back to a little bit of your blue. Blending it in. Now, you don't have to go all the way around the edges and worry that if it gets a little bit on the bird, it doesn't matter because we can paint right over. So I want you to remember that even if you make a mistake, even if you mess, even if you think you've done the wrong thing, it doesn't matter. If you hate the color you've used, all you have to do is give it 10 minutes to dry and paint right over it. And I'm going to go slowly now, just showing you how I'm going even behind where the wing goes making sure all my edges are colored nicely. I've ombre it down, meaning I've shaded it, so it's not the same color all the way around. And I'm almost ready to let it dry. I would put it down, I would give it a few minutes to let it dry. Um, I'm going to show you the other one which is over here, that I did in more of a watercolor finish. And even although this is already done, I'm going to give you an example of what we could do if we tried a different color. I'm going to just wash off this brush. And this time, I'm going to do a background for you in a more brown, muted color, just to give you an idea of your choices. So I'm going to go over this one. Going around it. I think it's good to see that you actually can go over something that you've painted, that there's nothing final. Dipping in lots of white, bringing it down. 
by doing a more neutral background, we can maybe use some blue in the birds. Remember, you want to have a contrasting color between your background and your birds. Now, I brought something fun to show you. I'm going to stop there. Um, I know a lot of you don't have this at home right now, but I just stopped off at the store on the way here and I got it. It's a stencil. And it says all really cool things. So it says, families are forever, home, caring, there's no place like home. What you can do, and I'm going to do it in the very bottom corner because it's dry. You want to do this in an area where there is no wet paint. You can stencil some words over your canvas. I can't do it where it's wet, but I'm going to do a couple of them on the side. And I'm actually going to write family just over here. And I'm going to run my color in. Now you at home are going to be asking, but what must I do? I don't have the stencil. Well, remember your background must be dry. And you can always order one, or you could improvise and make the words. So you can come up with words. That was family. Um, we can try one where it's wet. And I can put home. Whoops. Did that work? No needs to be dry. Um, maybe one more, love, just at the bottom. I am going sideways. Live happy. This is just an idea. Forever. You might choose not to do this. This is just an idea of how you can be creative with your own piece. Remember, in between doing things, you always want to give your brush a really good wash, and you really want to dry it afterwards. So we're going to go back to the first painting we started with, and we're going to start on our bird. And over here, I think I'm going to use the one that I have here is green and brown, but I think we're going to use greens and purples for today. And we're going to make a magenta. So you have a magenta in your paint pods. This is magenta. You have orange and you have yellow. I think I have the same paint that you have. I'm going to pick up the magenta. Now if you don't have magenta, don't worry about that. I'm going to show you exactly how you make it. We're going to take a clean plate. I'm going to take a little bit of pink and a teeny little bit of blue. And we're going to mix those two colors together. Now you may want to do a brown bird, and we'll get into doing a brown bird in a little bit. You can see how strong these pigments are, that if I use too much blue, it's actually giving me a purple. I'm going to dip into a little bit of white to brighten that up. And I'm going to start applying my blue onto my bird, filling in the head. I love double dipping. So clean your brush off nicely, get all the yucky paint off, dip into the white so you've got just white on your brush. Put a little bit of white on. I'm actually going to take one of the paper towels that we have. I'm going to clean my brush off nicely and I'm going to blend those two colors together so you get a nice shading picture. I'm going to go down through the bird's neck. Remember the bird doesn't have a neck because if it had a neck, its neck would pop off, its head would pop off when it's flying. So you really don't want to give your bird a long neck. You want to be able to touch the neck to the body. And I'm bringing my colors down. I'm going to swap into a little bit of pink. So while we're doing this, I'm going to tell you a few little things about me. I come from South Africa. I um, moved to the America, to the States about 25 years ago. 
and after I moved, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I actually understand what it feels like to be home and to really want to do something positive and to create. Um, I think when you start painting, you forget everything else. Your mind and your problems and everything you do is just becomes focused on what you're painting. I think it's very cathartic to be able to do this. So we want to rub this in. Now note I've taken no sort of time to do wings on the inside of the bird. I'm just covering the whole bird. Going slowly, going down the tail. I'm going to wash my brush. I am using a longer brush than you're using just because I need to reach it. But you're going to be using your little square brush. I'm going to join these two together. Maybe dip in a little bit of white. Carrying it down. And I think for the tail, I'm going to get back into my purple. Covering it nicely. I'm going back over the head. I have a teeny little bit of white on my brush. I am messy, so you'll see all this paint and everything, and don't be afraid to play with your colors. I think that's part of the fun. And I've almost covered most of my bird, and I'm gonna now start putting the few basic layers over the wing. And before I do that, I'm gonna wash my brush because I wanna get into some yellow. And if you use yellow and purple, you're going to get brown. So you don't want to have your yellow and your purple on your brush. You want to clean your brush. I'm just going to grab this. And I'm going to get into my yellow. We can actually use what's in your pod. And I'm put some yellow on my plate. I'm going to tone it down with a little bit of white. Don't use too much paint on your brush. If you have a ton of paint, it gets really gooey and messy. So you want to maybe clean it off and take a little bit less paint. And you're going to start now to put your yellow on your wing. You'll see mine's getting a little black because of the charcoal, but I don't mind that. It's kind of giving me a little depth. I'm liking the pink with the yellow. I've made one big area for a wing, and I'm going to divide this into two to give us both wings. By dipping in a teeny bit of brown and drawing where we think the wing should go. So you have one wing going there and the other wing at the back coming through here and coming down there. Now I'm going to get back into a teeny little bit of the brown and I'm going to darken the back to create a shadow. I'm going to have to just get into that. I want that shadow area to stay. Cleaning my brush again. And let's get back into a little bit of white. And I'm applying that on the second wing. Remember you can stop the video at any time. So if, you, if I'm going too fast or you, have, you want to think about something, you can stop it. I'm just going to grab it because I need to get into position 
to bring this wing up a little bit. It's a little bit harder to paint at an angle. And I'm gonna bring this wing up, which also shows you that you can go over your painting, you can go over your background. It doesn't really matter what you do until you're happy with what you've got. So now mine looks really weird because it looks like the wings are on top of the bird, which they are. I'm gonna bring my colors down a little bit, gently blending them in and bringing it down. I've got a little bit of white on my brush. I'm going to the top of the wing. I'm dry brushing on using the flat of the brush, not the tip, just the flat. And I'm going to create a softer edge. These wings are very thin and transparent. Pulling the swing over. Now, this is kind of fun what's happening to me here, where I have the white on the tip of my brush. I don't have a lot, and I'm letting it go around the tip, which helps show how thin it is. You can almost see the other wing from the back. You'll notice that I rub my paint on, um, it's called dry brushing. So you can either paint where you use the tip of your brush and you can cover it. Or if you like, you can take your paint onto the flat of your brush and you can rub it on. That really gives you a feather-like, very soft look just by rubbing it on. I'm going to wash my brush off. And I now need to think about my bird's feathers. So I'm going to jump into the same brush that you guys are using at home, which is a teeny tiny little brush that it's hiding. And I can't find it, so I'm going to use this one. Over here, a pointy brush. So you want your smallest brush with a point. And for the purpose of sketching, I'm actually going to sketch in white. Now, you may have sketched this in pencil. I didn't. And if you did and you've gone over it, it doesn't matter. And you really want to be able to say, to look at your bird, and you want to sketch on a few areas that we're going to do some details. So I'm breaking up this bird. I'm using white. It's just much easier if you make a mistake. And I'm sketching up a part over here. And I'm going to have a look at my bird's wing, and I want to bring this up as well. Dipping it in again. Just to add a little detail. I'm going to come back to this and do it again. I just am using the white to sketch in what I want to sketch in. You can actually take the back of your brush and scratch through if it's wet enough. If it's not, you can just dip in, paint your feathers. Going back with my turquoise. And then bringing my color through. Okay, so we've got the outlines of the bird, just the very basic shape. Um, one little tip if you press hard, you're going to get a big fat line. If you press softly, you're going to get a very thin line. So you don't want to apply a lot of pressure. 
if you apply a lot of pressure using your tip brush, you're going to get a quite a strong line. If you rather sketch it on lightly, you'll have more control and your line will be a lot thinner. So you want to be able to sketch in your lines. Drying it off and washing it. At this time, if you want to pause, take a break and revisit this in a couple of minutes, it's not a bad thing to do because it'll give you, give you an opportunity to let it dry. I am going to continue working on a wet canvas and I'm going to apply a little bit of brown to the beak, filling it in. And I'm also going to make a little mark where I want to have my feet. Oops. I'm going to sit because then I can reach it a lot easier. I'm going to mix a little red in with my brown, which is going to give me a color called Burnt Sienna. So it's red and brown, kind of like a rust. You can add some orange in. You can apply it on. You can add a little white. bringing it down and I'm going to make a mark where I want to have that eye. Don't forget we need an eye. This room that I'm painting in is so silent. I hope you guys have some nice music that you're listening to. It makes it a lot more fun. There we go. Bringing my color in, bringing my brown up, bringing it down. I'm going to take a teeny bit of this brown and bring it around. I take a little bit of this brown and I bring it up. I'm taking a little more of it. So I'm really letting my paint spread. I'm now bringing a little bit of this dark color into my wing. A little teeny bit more. If you want some detail, okay, washing my brush off again. And I now need to do the bird's feathers. You want to make sure your brush is nice and clean. I'm going to sketch out the feathers. I'm just looking at the time. So we have about 30 minutes left. Or well, I have 30 minutes left, but you can take your time. And I'm doing the first layer of the bird's back feathers. I've used white. I don't know why I chose a hummingbird. The hummingbirds are in my garden at the moment and they're flying all over. I'm going to go back to my pink and I'm using the side of my brush, dipping in very little paint, not a lot of paint. And 
and I'm adding a little detail. Maybe a teeny bit of blue. Pink and blue will give us purple. We can use this plate with a purple. And gently scratching up a little bit of white. And just for fun, I'm actually going to try something. I'm going to pick up a little bit of turquoise. And I'm bring a teeny bit of the turquoise into the bird's body. Not too much, just a little. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush again. Now, we need to make the bird's feathers at the back, the long tail of feathers. And I'm going to have to grab it and hold it a little bit closer to me so I can reach it. I'm going to start off from here, from underneath. I'm doing it in white so you can see. And then we'll go over with colors. And you want to have those long, soft tail feathers. Coming down. I'm going to go back to my pink. Bring a little bit of the pink in. Wash my brush. Dip back in my brown. Give my bird two little feet. My bird's flying, so I'm not really playing and paying much attention to the feet. Turn my little mistake into something that works. And I'm now going to let this bird dry for a few minutes before we do the finishing touch. And I'm going to get into our first canvas. So if you're still busy, you can take your time and catch up to me. You can pause your screen and we're going to just have a look at the other bird to see how we do it in a different color. For those of you at home who don't want a pink and yellow bird, I want to show you how to do one in brown. I've taken my burnt umber, my brown, and mixed it with some white. I'm going to start applying that brown. Oops onto our bird. I'm just basically covering the body. Filling in the whole area. 
maybe getting into a little bit of orange. Now you might be doing a big falcon or you might be doing an owl. It doesn't matter what your bird is. I've blended my oranges and my browns together. I'm actually going to keep using my orange and my yellow, giving myself a wing that goes down. Maybe going back to a little bit of brown. I put the first layer down of this bird. using the very tip of my brush, just the tip, to create a little texture in the wet paint, little feathers coming up, and our bird of course needs a tail, so there's our tail coming down. Maybe just for fun, even although we're doing a brown bird, we could put a teeny bit of pink in the tail. So you can see all your different options. Now we need to do the other one. I think for the other one, let's keep it in a gray color. So I'm mixing white with a teeny little bit of black. And I'm gonna color the circle. I'm going to extend that over to the oval. So you've lost your bird. I'm going to take it out into the wings. Now my background and my bird are very similar in color. So I'm going to be using a lot of white so you can see the bird. a lot of the white. I'm applying the paint really thick so that it forms the wings and I have my tail. I'm going to wash, wipe my brush and dip the very very tip into black and make sure I've got my thin lines and I'm going to be sketching on you can use the back of the brush, which is kind of a cool little trick. And you can make your two little eyes. When you've made your two little eyes in black, take some white and just dip the teeniest little bit of white onto your eyes. And you want to be able to sketch around, very lightly outlining the head, giving your bird the back and maybe using a little bit of the black just to outline it so it pops out. Now my bird has a flower in its mouth, so we mustn't forget to do that. But before we do that, I'm going to go into the brown. I'm going to paint in my tree trunk. Now at home, you don't have two paintings to work on. You're working on one. But maybe this second one is something you could visit again um, on a, either a piece of paper, you could try it out, or on a canvas, or even a piece of cardboard. And painting it in. Going back 
to my brown. Dipping in my black, giving my bird its feet. Using the tip, going into the back of the brush and putting my bird's eye on it. Dipping into the white, and a teeny little of light. Cleaning my brush. I am speeding it up so we get this done on time and we get time to do the details of the other one. But here's a little flower. And it's really cool if you double dip in. So I have orange, white, pink, red, all the colors on my brush. A little flower. Maybe giving it a little stem. Getting back into my white. Oops, I have a little red on my brush. Giving your branch a little detail. Going into the black, outlining it gently. Getting back into my grays, using a dry brush to create a bit of texture and a bit of feathering. to my brown. We want to blend this in. I'm actually going to try and just see if we can scratch some little pattern in for our feathers using the back of my brush. And I know on this video we're running tight on time, so I do want to visit the last one that we did, the first one, and see how that's going. So here's our little hummingbird, and we need to look at what we need to do to finish it off. what we're going to do is just slim down that beak a little bit. Getting back into the teal, making it just a little bit thinner, rubbing my colors in, going to a little bit of brown, bringing that down, going into a teeny little bit of white, highlighting my feet, Just for fun, I'm going to use the big brush. I'm going to dry it off really well. I'm going to dip it in a teeny little bit of white. I'm going to take not too much white paint on my brush and I'm getting back into my background. 
and very gently I'm going to make some clouds just rubbing them in See how I'm taking most of the paint off the brush. Softening my background. just having a look what you want to do to your bird to do any details um, dipping back in your black or your brown you can go back into your wing and making it very gently you can add your feathers bringing them down highlighting them a little bit If you wanted to put a tree on your painting or you wanted to put a suggestion of something, going into a little bit of my brown again. Maybe taking our flat brush, drying it off. Dipping it into the white again. Maybe adding a few blossoms. A little pink. Just remember at home that you can make this whatever you want it to be. This is not a painting that you have to copy step by step. This is something that as you go, you will evolve your own picture, your own design. You'll come up with what you want to paint. I've added some blossoms just to give that little garden feel. Maybe teeny tiny bits of green just to brighten it up. And that's pretty much our birds for today. Um, I think as we have five minutes left, I'm going to show you how to draw an owl. I think that's a fun bird to do. I'm going to just clean this all to the side. All these dirty brushes in water. Get rid of this. We're going to revisit our simple shapes. I want you to begin with an oval. I want you to put two ears on. I want you to make two spaces for wings. And have your eyes. Now, of course, I'm drawing this upside down. You're going to be drawing this the right way up. We're going to have our little nose. We're going to have our feet. And the beauty of this is, in one second, you actually have an owl. We can take some paint. And you can use some bright, fun colors. 
No one said an owl has to be brown. Get into a little bit of white. Give him his fun ears and his fun crown. Adding on his feathers. Dipping into some more white. I'm going to give him his body. feet and his eyes and a little nose maybe a tree so no matter what bird you do doesn't matter if it's an owl or a crow or a hummingbird. Just use your simple shapes. Think about what you want to do. Make this bird your creation. I'm just going to grab our creations for the day, for the morning. Here we have our hummingbird. And we have our little brown bird. Um, and that's it for today.